think most people go, you know, so again, it goes back to, 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 the, to the first point that I've mentioned. So, so I hope more uh, uh, projects or more companies like QQ Bao uh, can come up to share with us their experiences. And uh, from there, I think that would give us more idea of how a wallet is working. Thank you. Hi, I'm Davy, and uh, I'm the CEO for Bitcoin, which is a cryptocurrency exchange in Singapore. In Singapore, there's about 15 exchanges in Singapore today. I'm one of the 15, right? And uh, let me give some color to decentralized and centralized wallet, right? As an exchange, we have a centralized wallet, okay? And we always say ourselves, Bitcoin is safe and secure. Why? Because on, on our exchange, the wallet itself, we have two wallets. One is a cold wallet and one is a hot wallet. The cold wallet is not offline. A hot wallet is not online. If you give me $100 and put your wallet in my exchange, $80 is not in my offline, which means it doesn't have any Wi-Fi or link to the internet. At the same time, the cold wallet has three location decryption, which means that if you come to Singapore and steal my cold wallet, it still doesn't work. Because there are two other countries that has two other location decryption uh, module. Right? So if somebody wants to steal my cold wallet at $80, he has to go to three different countries to steal the cold wallet at the same time. So the safety is very high. Now what happened to the 20%? The 20% which is the $20 out of the $100. As an exchange, we also buy insurance. Now, some of the big insurance companies provide insurance for the hot wallet. Okay, so as an exchange, we do buy uh, uh, insurance for your hot wallet but there's a quantum of course because insurance still getting used to it right now so we can buy up to about 20 million dollar hot wallet insurance coverage for the hot wallet so now you can see that even though the centralized exchange there's a lot of security to that right and of course as uh, Qpao has mentioned as well the whole customer experience the reason why you have cold or why you're centralized or decentralized it, just make sure your ease of convenience. If you come to a centralized exchange like ours, if something goes wrong, if you move from this to this wallet to another wallet to buy crypto, any other crypto, if something goes wrong, you can call us, right? And we'll tell you, we'll follow up with you and rectify the issue for you. It gives you a sense of comfort, right? So there is a lot of, because I'm, not because I'm centralized, but so far from the customer feedback, the centralized wallet is a much better ease of use for most users, I would say. Okay, at the same time, the transfer fee will be a lot cheaper as well, right? So, uh, again, um, like now, a lot of Singapore is becoming going very friendly now. So, a lot of uh, ICO and uh, companies, crypto companies, are all coming to Singapore. So, I, I, please feel free, you know, log into our exchange. Right, and feel the experience is different of a centralized wallet. Right, and I encourage any time you guys come to Singapore, we have a training room as well, about not as big as this, about half the size. We actually train people how to trade. We train you with more information about wallets, as well as, well as what is happening in the market space itself. So we do a lot of training uh, as an exchange. Okay, uh, that's any other question? Not, I'm going to pass to the next speaker. みなさんこんにちは。え、私は、え、日本の会社ですので、日本語で回答させていただきます。えっと、で、この中で日本の取引所に仮想通貨をまだ入れてる方ってどれくらいいらっしゃいますか
あのやっぱりこの特徴のところでいうと日本っていうのはすごく企業を信頼をしているのであの、まあ、ブロックチェーンの信頼よりも企業の信頼がちょっと勝っている部分がまだあるのかなとすごく思いますで日本の取引所はですね今漏れなく行政処分を受けてますので本来であれば、まあ、信頼は失墜しており、えー、ご自身のウォレットにあの資産は移すべきであるっていうのが今の日本の現状ではあるんですけども今なんかこの会場にいらしている方はやっぱり知識のレベルも高い人も多いのでやはりあのそういうのを感じてですねじゃあちょっと取引所から移そうかなっていう人も結構いらっしゃると思いますがこれがもっと一般の方に行くと多分コインチェックがあのハッキングの相当があったとしても翌日になってもまだ出さないというような方が多いかなと思いますでやっぱこれはあの分散型と集中型の問題で、えー、分散型オレットはやっぱり難しいあのどういった理論で動いてるかもわからないしブロックチェーンの暗号機って何というような状況がまだ多いので、まあ、今回登壇いただいたあのプロジェクトの方もおっしゃってますけどもやっぱ教育っていう部分が一つ大事になってくるのじゃないかなと。すごく感じております。Thank you.、Oh, we have a very international panel today. We got people from different parts, from China, from Singapore, from Japan. And thank you so much for your insightful thoughts. And、uh, here c o m e our second question. People keep talking about the regulation of blockchain these days. And it seems like more regulations of blockchains will be launched shortly in more and more countries. What do you think of the regulations of blockchain?、Uh, what do you expect? Okay. Ah, is this? 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 发布这些、颁布这些、呃、相关的这些、呃、规则、呃、区块链规则、呃，包括泰国呢，其实在，在、呃、之前也是颁布了他们自己的这个区块链相关的这些、呃、相关的这些规则啊、呃，所以说其实、呃、未来呢，可能说我我区块链这一块它的一些相关的这些规则呢，可能监管会有一些有趣的事情，包括说、呃、之前呢，我们的同事呢也是遇到了这个 Carl， 就是他是这个以太坊一个核心的一个成员。那他呢？其实呃，也跟他在交流嘛，就是说未来可能监管呢，可能会以这种呃独立的这种运营商的这种形式存在于这个以太坊，就好像这个 Plasma 在这种啊、呃、以太坊上。所以说这种这种这种模式其实是非常有趣的。那呃，说如果未来，因为我们区块链当中会有很多重要的公链，那如果说这些监管呢，那都是以这些公链为据点，那去进行这种监管的话，那这种模式其实是确实是非常的有趣。然后。呃，也会给这个行业带来很多新的东西啊，所以说其实这是一个很独特的这种，呃，算是一种这种区块链式的这种规则吧。呃、uh, ，Well, uh, personally, I welcome the regulation of、uh, why.、Uh, I think、uh, the regulation is positive for the entire industry. Uh, last year, as the、uh, still just、uh, shock the last year is the.、Uh, you know, Market is very hot, and、uh, lots of projects, and、uh, maybe lots of scam projects. So I think the the the, the regulation will help to ex expel those air projects or scam projects, and、uh, make the entire industry you know, more clean. So that's why I'm positive to the,、uh, the regulation. And I think、uh, the reg the regulation will be you know long term benefit to the industry because the, this bad project is gone and、uh, those I think the good project will still survive、uh, after the regulation and uh, uh, after the entire industry、uh, become clean so more you know more capital more investment、uh, will be able to you know, come into this industry and、uh, benefit to all these. Investors of this industry. Yes, that's my point of view. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Nathan.、Um, my my opinion is that regulation has to step in.、Um, like some some other panelists has mentioned, there are a lot of、uh, scam projects that is in the market. I have some friends who 
invested in some blockchain project and, and uh, they, they, they did not even read the white paper. And then eventually when you download the white paper, it's actually an empty white paper. You know, so there are a lot of such things that's in, in the market, especially in 2017. So, so in 2018, we hope that you know, when the regulation steps in, you know, it, it gives a lot of more traditional uh, investor uh, uh, another opportunity for them to be part of this uh, crypto and blockchain industry. And uh, we, we definitely need a lot more good projects that can uh, boost up the name of uh, cryptocurrencies. You know, most people are still link, linking blockchain to just Bitcoin, scams, drugs, and so forth. We need a lot of public awareness uh, uh, programs to change the perception of all this consumer. You know, so, so having said so, I, I, I totally agree that regulation should step in fast and that will benefit this whole industry in, in the very long run. You know, just, just a few more minutes, maybe i share a bit about what Infinity is doing. Um, we are not um, going for any ICOs, as you have followed what I have mentioned in my previous um, articles and so forth. We are not going for ICOs. We believe that the business model that we have currently will be able to create real businesses, create real uh, revenue, and, and we are not keen in ICO. And I, I constantly uh, look at the market. Uh, actually, the number of ICO projects has dropped, actually. So that is a very good sign. It's a good sign that people are not just playing with you know, the exchange. Uh, people like Infinity uh, is doing real work, and I hope more people can do, do the same and follow our initiative. Um, let, let me put this to uh, David. David is an ex-banker, a very senior banker in Singapore. Maybe he can give us a bit more insights on uh, regulation. Thanks, Andy. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a very interesting answer, very short. Now, the question is uh, regulation, right? In March this year, during the G20 summit, very clearly the conclusion of the summit was come July, which is this month, they're going to regulate. So regulation is definitely coming, right? For sure, right? For myself, Bitcoin, you know, say we're safe and secure, we actually hired a compliance officer from the banking side to make sure our AML, KYC process and post-transaction monitoring process are compliant like the bank standards, okay? But I'm going to give you a very interesting answer because I've been banking for almost 30 years. I work for four banks, Credit Suisse West Boston, Citibank, KBLMO Bank, and DBS Bank as well, right? If you look at the banking industry, how many financial crises do we have? Many. Actually, in the banking industry, we have many regulations. But somehow, we still have financial crisis. We almost died, the US almost died in the last one, right? So it's very interesting to ask yourself, and for myself, in 30 years, every day, compliance, regulation, and things like that. Actually, the very provocative thinking is that the best regulation is no regulation. Why? The reason thinking is that because the central bank feels that a lot of retail investors, like some of you here, lose money. I have to protect you. I have to protect you from the evil people who fraud. That is the thinking of the government people. But actually, the funny thing is, because there's regulation, the market doesn't learn today. If you look at how, look at how billions of dollars that different banks have paid. Whether it's Citibank, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, all of them have paid billions of dollars, even though there's regulation. Now, if there was no regulation, of course what's going to happen is that some of you will lose a lot of money because you haven't learned and equipped. But if you have lost money, trust me, you learn. The best way of learning is when you pay with your wallet and pocket, and you become much more careful and you become a lot smarter 
as an investor, right? And then this thing will never happen. So as a person, a senior banker, we've gone through so many financial crises. I know the regulator will not listen, like to listen to what I said, but the reality of very provocative thinking is the best regulation, no regulation. Why? Because you learn. The investor learn to be careful. The investor learn to pick up knowledge, how to invest in all the financial product. But because you're protected, you don't learn as much. I, I, I know I'm giving us something very interesting here, but honestly, I can tell you, but the market players, everyone in my market, everybody wants regulation. Everybody is expecting regulation. But the honest truth, because we never live in the financial market that's not regulated, all of us don't understand what is not being regulated. And that's a fear in us. But of course I know it's not going to happen because the world is run by government people. Right? So what I said, I know it's not going to happen, but just to leave you thinking about it, it's a, it's a provocative thinking. Right? I'm sure it will be regulated and me as a market player, I will still put compliance process, procedure process as well. But the honest truth is, the best regulation is no regulation. Thank you. あの、ま、私は日本の規制についてちょっとコメントをしようかなと思います。あの、日本は規制が今厳しくかかっている状況ですね。で、えっと、これは先ほどありました、投資家保護という形で詐欺が多いので、日本は規制をかけているという状況です